Fantastic. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on how FileCloud workflow automation can help to increase efficiency and productivity. So in today's webinar, we will be talking about what is workflow automation and how you can use it, how to start managing and creating workflow automation, and I'll be showing you some basic workflow recipes. So you might be wondering what is workflow automation? It's a new feature in FileCloud that allows users to automate steps in their business process that are usually completed or performed on a regular basis. These steps are also triggered based on an event in FileCloud. Also, automated workflow creation is controlled from the admin portal through user policies. Therefore, this control allows users under the policy to create and manage workflows from the user portal. So how do you start creating a workflow? From here, um, the admin just needs to make sure that they pol the policy that's applied to the user, or it could be the global default policy, has disable workflow automation set to no. This means that you are allowing users to create workflow automation. Um, by default, this is actually set to no. That means that the global default policy allows users to be able to create workflow automation from the user portal, unless the admin would want to create a specific policy to, re uh, to restrict only specific users to create workflow automation. Now, once the uh, control from the admin side has been enabled, users should be able to see um, the workflow section from the user portal. Once that one is clicked, they should be able to click on the create new workflow button and the start button should create should allow the user to create the workflow uh, from scratch now the user would also be uh, asked to select what trigger would they want to start with their workflow so it could be a file trigger when a file is created updated uploaded or a folder is created within a specific directory it could also be a share when a share is created or updated it could also be triggered when a user sends a file to the workflow or a timer based or a time based workflow or a trigger. Now, today uh, I will be showing you two basic uh, workflow recipes. One will be the share approval workflow, and the other would be the invoice approval workflow. Let me show you a quick demo. So in here, um, let's go back to, let's start from the admin settings and let me log into my admin portal here since it timed out on me. So we have policies, click edit and under the user policy tab, all the way to the bottom, you will see your workflow controls here. So you have the disable workflow automation and if you wanna require share approval for uh, users under this policy, this can also be set. So once that one's taken care of on the admin side or on the user side where the policy is applied, the user should be able to see a section for workflows. There goes your create new workflow. In this case, I do have two workflows already pre-created for this demo. You can click on either one of the workflows to see what are the existing instances. You could also hover your mouse over under instances and it should be able to list how many instances have been completed and how many is running. You could stop, edit, delete, or share the workflow if you wanna share. You wanna allow other users to be able to manage the workflow as well. So now we'll start off with, um, I'll show you how you could start creating your workflow. So you start creating workflow from here. On the upper left-hand corner, this allows you to put in a name of workflow. Click on the checkbox and click on the start button. The start button allows, opens up the different triggers that you have or that you could use. So you could start by selecting automatically on a file activity. When you click on next, it gives you a list of what will be the file events that will trigger the workflow. And you could limit 
the path as to where the workflow will be applied. So you could actually trigger it for the entire theme folder, or if you want to go deeper into subfolders within the theme folder, that would also be possible. Now, if you click on start again, uh, let's go back one step. Discard. You could also select um, a share event. So when you click next, it could also, this is the share event. So it could be an update or a creation of a share. And like I, uh, like earlier, you could it would also show you, uh, it would also allow you to limit the, the directory where the workflow will be applied. Now let's go ahead and create one similar to the share approval workflow. So I'm just going to limit this to a specific team folder. So I do have a folder here for sharing, select that one, click add. Now this is uh, the builder, the workflow builder. Uh, I want to put in a new name here, new share approval workflow, select that one. You already have the trigger event configured. So the next thing is to add components into your workflow. So you could either add a condition into your workflow by basically drag and dropping the condition. You could also um, set up or assign variables into your existing workflow. You could copy files or folders. You could move files and folders once uh, for that trigger or for that event. You could also create directories. In this case, we're going to use wait for a share approval workflow. So what we're going to do is drag and drop uh, the object into the workflow. And then when you click on the object, it allows you to set the components or the parameters. So from here, it allows you to select who needs to approve the workflow. So I do have another user here for in my in my file cloud system. So I would want one to Cruz to be able to approve all shares. I could put in a message here. Uh, there's a default message already to approve the share. I could also add variables to my message if I need to. And I could indicate how many approvals are required to uh, allow the share to, to go through. So in this case, I'm just going to add one, but you could also increase the number to a, a different number of your preference. So I'll go ahead and click Save. Now, once that one's done, I just need to put in an action, basically setting a share approve and a share rejection for the work. Once that one's done, I could go ahead and create the workflow. And it should allow me to create the workflow. And this is how it would look like. So I already created one. I'm just going to delete it so it won't cause any confusion. So I've already created a share approval workflow. And in here, I also created a, an invoice approval workflow. Let's go ahead and modify the, or I would, let's go ahead and examine the invoice approval workflow. I'll go ahead and edit. I've stopped, if you notice, I've stopped the workflow. And this is how it would look like. So I've got a trigger event here. And basically, the trigger event that I've used is a user uh, trigger event. So a, if a user sends the file to a workflow for to the invoice approval workflow to be approved, that would be the start of it. I have a condition here that basically uh, examines if a specific metadata exists. And uh, the attribute for the metadata would be the amount. And if it's basically less than 500, could be the currency. Um, this is the condition. So if the amount for the invoice is less than 500, do this and do that. So what are the actions that would happen once the condition has been satisfied? So once the condition returns true or yes, it will actually move the file that triggers the event to the specific directory. So I, I have a tr um, I'm routing the document to the completed workflow or the completed folder. And if it returns false, I'm going to route the document into test into the for review folder. So that means another user would need to review if the workflow or if the amount on the invoice is greater than 500. So basically that was done. Um, I'm not gonna change anything on that one. I just wanna start the workflow and I will show you how it looks like. So from here, uh, if we go into team folders, workflow automation, I do have some sample files that I've already uploaded. I also created a metadata set that would uh, store invoice 
uh, information, such as if we go into metadata, select one of the folders, I have an invoice detail metadata set that one, uh, has a parameter of, or an attribute uh, that would hold the amount for the invoice. So I do have 550, which means this is greater than 500. Um, what the user would need to do is just hover a mouse over, click on the options or the more options button, and there's a start workflow all the way to the bottom, and you can send this to the invoice approval workflow. What it does is that it will tell you that the workflow has started successfully for this document. And if I, I go ahead and refresh, it should take the document out of this um, of this directory and moves it to a different folder. I could do the same for the others. So I could hover my mouse over, start examining the document. And as well as the third one. So let's go ahead. So how do you know if a workflow is running or if, if a workflow is processing a document? A user can actually go into workflows, click on the invoice approval, and you'll see that the documents or what's the status of the documents that's currently being processed. So you can see that the status has been completed and it, it occurred a few seconds ago. I could click on one of the documents and I could see what happened to the file. So from here, uh, let's try and examine what could be wrong. I do have an error message that I'm seeing. Okay, so it actually, this allows delete. So I forgot to, I actually forgot to grant permission to the user for this folder. So let me go back into team folders here and go back into workflow automation and just click on manage. I just wanna give this user the ability to also delete because it's actually moving the file from one directory to another. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. Click refresh. I'm gonna go back to the workflow. the uploads directory so let me send this back into workflow so I'll do that send this other document as well and that one's done so let's go ahead and refresh so now you notice that the documents have disappeared from the uploads directory now let's go ahead and find where those documents are so I've placed two directories, which is the completed and the for review. If we go to the for review, you can see here that I do have that document that I just transferred. This document has an invoice amount of over 500, which means that it goes to this folder for review. And let's go to the other directory, which is, sorry, let's go to the other directory called completed. And from the completed folder, we could see that the sample invoice that I was testing with, this one has an invoice amount of 490, which is less than 500, and it automatically goes to completed. So you see where the files are moving. Let's go and examine, go back to workflows, and we could examine the files that we just transferred earlier. So it also shows when it was, it was processed, so you can see here that it was successful. Um, the failed condition here, actually this is a, a false, it should return passed and failed, so this is uh, tr true and false. So this one, this uh, invoice has an amount of over 500, so it basically sends it over. It was successfully moving the file and it successfully completed uh, the process within the workflow. So you could also see the other documents here that we just processed. So it says it said, uh, sorry, it was it, it says success, so that means the condition was met successfully or was matched successfully. So it moves the, the file into the completed directory and it also successfully completed the workflow processing. So basically how you, how, that's how you would wanna try and configure your, uh, you wanna start playing around with your workflow automation.